Welcome back to this next video on project management and the fundamentals of running projects. In this video we're going to be looking at estimating, estimating time and costs. So that is estimating how long our project is going to take to complete and how much our project is going to cost to complete. Ultimately we need to know this so that we can answer this one question. Is the project worth doing? We already know from our concept phase and from our business case what it is we want to achieve and why that is something we want to we actually want to produce. We've got our list of benefits. Part of putting together that business case is making this judgment call about whether the project is worth it. So this estimating probably will start quite early on in the project, certainly before the business case is completed. As the project manager, you may or may not be involved in this part. But we are all about answering that question, do the benefits outweigh the costs? And if they do, will you go ahead with the project? If they don't, we shelve the project, and, or rather we shelve the business case, and it never becomes a project. So how long will our project take, and how much will it cost, and is it worth it? One of the things, one of the concepts um, when we're doing estimating is this idea of, a, of an estimating funnel. As we start to gather data and information and do research, we will start to come up with a number of estimates. And we will have some, have some estimates that are quite high and some estimates that are quite low. And if you've been involved in getting costings for anything within the workplace, you may have been asked to go and get three quotes for something. And this is that idea of we end up with a high quote and a lower quote and generally we got something in the middle. And we're doing that same with estimates. Now bearing in mind estimates, we, our estimates that we come up with may come from actually getting quotes from companies. But we're not going to estimate once at the beginning. We're going to do this over time and in fact we should do this throughout the entire project for all the remaining activities and costs involved to make sure we're continuing to give as accurate predictions as possible. So right at the beginning we're going to do our first lot of estimates and we're going to come up with a number of estimates hopefully based on different information and data if possible. The larger the project, the more time you're going to be putting into these estimates. So the bigger the investment is going to be in the company, either financially or time-wise, the more amount of time should be put into getting accurate estimates. But once we've got our high estimates and our lower estimates, we can come up with what our probable final cost is, whether that is cost financially or within time. And it's going to be an average of those, most likely. We can look at some other techniques in a bit more detail. As we move through the project and we're starting to get closer to the time of ordering those materials or undertaking those activity and we're getting more accurate quotes, of course what we see is our lower estimate and our higher estimate are beginning to converge. They're getting more accurate. And so actually our probable final cost is a little bit more accurate than it was at the beginning. And we proceed through the project continuing to do estimates and this will take into account any changes in material costs, any changes to the project outcomes or the scope of the project which we'll talk about another time until we of course get towards the end of the project where our estimates are very accurate. And of course we then end up with, a, at the end of the project, we can work out what our total final cost was. So one of the methods we can do to do estimating is called comparative, comparative estimates. And this is the easiest one for people to grasp because we are literally comparing our current project to another project that we've already completed. So if you've done a similar project before, you already know how much that cost and how long that took. If the project you're doing this time is very similar to that, great, it's going to have a similar cost to it. But of course, not every project is the same. They are all unique. So what you need to make sure is that you scale your project or your, the data from your previous project to suit your current project. So in the example at the bottom here, we've got last project we spent £5,000 
for 10 PCs as part of that project to install those. Our new project, actually, we're not doing 10 PCs, we're doing 15. We're doing a, a different building, a different office, whatever it may be. But actually, by scaling our previous price, we can see that we can get a, a pretty accurate um, sort of costing here. Uh, and if you look at my particular numbers there, there's something tragically wrong with those. Um, <laughs> in my previous example, it works out that they're £500 per PC on average. And in my example following that, that's clearly not the case. So uh, this just illustrates um, that accuracy is really, really important thing to, to keep an eye on. But the principle is we scale to size. So let's pretend that didn't happen. Our next lot of estimating that we can do is called parametric estimating. It's different from comparative, although sometimes it can get confused. So let's make sure we break this down. What we are doing is we are looking at our current project and we're comparing various elements of that to data um, that already exists. We're not comparing it directly with another project we've already done. We're using a much larger data set. And that data set we're using is going to come from internal and external sources. So we're going to look at other projects other people have run or similar projects. We can look up data, we can look up research, we can look up experience. A lot more involved uh, and we, we spend a lot more time gathering that information. But what we're trying to produce is this idea of a per unit cost. So in the previous example, we were able to have a per unit cost of about £500 per, seat per PC we were replacing. But that was taken directly from one project. In this example, what we're doing is we're looking at a much wider base of data and actually we're working out, again, that per unit cost. Much more useful if you're doing things like building, um, building buildings, laying roads or railway track. So our example here is we've worked out that actually it costs us £756 per square metre of paving. Of course, that might be per 10 metres of railway line, that may be per... Um, you know per foot of fencing whatever it is that makes sense within yours uh, within your project we also have analytical estimating also known as bottom up this is a lot more detailed than the other two but you can't start this right at the beginning so the other two the comparative and parametric are very useful very early in the project to be able to get using data that is available, some pretty good estimates of what your cost is. But it's not very detailed. With our analytical, what we're going to do is we're going to look at every individual part of our project and work out how much that's going to cost. So returning to our computer example, we've got some costs here where we've estimated that the cables we're going to require is going to be about £100. The connectors that we require, 20. Our keyboards, about £250 on those. And the mice that we're going to need comes to about £200 for whatever this refurbishment is we're doing. Because we've managed to get individual prices, we can then work out that actually together our cables and connectors, so our installation costs, added together, quite simply gives us £120. And our keyboard and mice package comes to £450 per unit desktop, um, per 100 PCs, whatever it might be. And we can put those together. And of course, by adding those two different parts of the project together, we get a final project cost of £570. So this is really, really good when you've got access to know how many cables you need, how many connectors you need, etc. But you don't know that at the beginning. You don't know that at the business case part. You may know that you're looking to upgrade um, 100 computers or um, overhaul three cars, whatever it may be. But until the project manager starts their planning and you build what is known as a work breakdown structure, which we'll look at in a future video, you won't know what the individual tasks are. And without knowing those individual tasks and those individual product products, you can't assign costs to them. So this is part of this is happens within the planning phase, so the definition phase of your project. Not really practical for this to be done in the concept phase. So when we're estimating time, 
we can literally assign based on experience how long we believe using either comparative or parametric um, we can actually assign times to these so in this example we're talking about trying to get ready for work in the morning you will know and you may find these timings quite uh, uh, inaccurate for you personally but you may know that for example taking your shower and everything involved in that takes you about six minutes you know, actually getting dressed takes you about four minutes. That's going to vary wildly depending on how long you need to spend drying and brushing your hair, which will depend on how long your hair is, whether you do or do not wear makeup, um, what clothes you are wearing, how long they may take to, uh, to put on. And ironing clothes. With a lot of modern fabrics, a lot of people don't iron clothes anymore. So for you, that may be zero, but for others, that may be more than just five minutes. But what we can do is we can each of these individual tasks, we can assign a time to. So again, breakfast, we're going to make a cup of tea, we're going to make some toast, we're going to eat and drink. Um, and then we've got our actual travel. We're going to make sure we've checked our car if we're going any kind of distance, our fuel and our tyres. We're going to plan our route and then we're actually going to drive. So by adding those up, we can see that for totally we can see that the whole getting dressed part of our project is going to take about 15 minutes. We're going to spend about 17 minutes in total having breakfast and about 50 minutes in total for a part of our journey. So of course using that information you can work out how long it's going to take you to get to your destination and therefore what time you need to set your alarm clock. Now you do this intuitively. If you're going to work or um, you're going anywhere on a regular basis, you will automatically know what time you need to set your alarm for. And you probably get set your alarm for the same time every morning because you know what your estimate amount of preparation time is to get ready for work. But this is an example of using the bottom-up estimating where we are adding the individual components together to get an overall time. So these concepts can be applied throughout the project, as we said when we looked at the estimating funnel, to give you a really good idea and an accurate picture of how long things are going to take from now until the end of the project, or how much um, your project is going to cost from now to the end of your project. Of course, activities that have already happened as you progress through the project, you have a definite amount of time that it did take and a definite cost of how much you've been invoiced for and how much you've had to spend. And that's one of the reasons your estimates get more accurate towards the end of the project, because some of those figures stop being estimates and being actual hard figures that you can enter into a, a spreadsheet or a database and see what it actually was. And of course, that information can then be used in the future as part of a parametric or a comparative estimate. So make sure you always do keep that information available for those kind of purposes in the future and not just for the project you're working on at the moment. Again, this is just an introduction. This can get an awful lot more complicated and there are other tools available for you. But this is just to introduce you to these ideas. So I hope you found this useful uh, and informative. If you have, please leave a like on this video. Uh, consider subscribing for further videos coming up. And if you have any questions, please do leave a comment and I'll be happy to address them either in the comments or uh, in a future video. Thank you and take care.